Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the accounting standard setting bodies for governmental and not-for-profit accounting. This topic is covered in your governmental and not-for-profit accounting graduate or undergraduate course as well as the CPA exam. What makes this topic a little bit complicated is the fact that we have in the US three levels of government, federal, state, and local. In addition to that, we have not-for-profit, which is not a government, which is not for profit, but under not for profit organization, not for profits could be public, which is governmental, or it could be private. So notice we have five different units or five different categories of units that we need to understand which accounting standard regulate which body. Now, before we start, if you are a CPA candidate or a governmental accounting student, I strongly suggest you visit my website, farhatlectures.com, especially if you are a CPA candidate. I don't replace your CPA review course. Please keep it. I don't replace it. This is not what I do. I can do that. I can be a useful addition to your CPA review course. I can be the vitamin pill that's going to add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam score. And I'm going to tell you from experience, if you are studying for your CPA, my CPA review course have, have, have had helped hundreds, if not thousands of students passing far because I understand, I'm not, I understand, I explain governmental accounting way differently than any other CPA review course. Try me for a month. That's your risk. If you don't like it, cancel. Your potential is passing the exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university is doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources and lectures for other accounting, governmental audit, tax courses as well. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so and take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So let's go ahead and get started with this accounting setting standard bodies. I'm going to start with the federal government. Okay. So who sets the accounting standard for the federal government? Well, accounting and financial reporting standard is published by the Federal Accounting Standard Advisory Board or FAS-AB. So this is the organization or the, or the board that sets the accounting standard for the governmental, for the federal government. Okay. The standards are technically recommendations. So those are recommendation because the U.S. is obviously a sovereign nation and it cannot give that regulation to an independent party. So this board gives recommendation. And guess what? Those recommendation becomes standards or principle as long as no one object to them. And who's going to not object to them? Three parties. The U.S. Government Accountability Office. If they don't say anything, they accept it. The U.S. Department of Treasury and the U.S. Office of Management and Budget. So when, and the Controller General. When these parties, they don't object to what FAS AB is stating, it becomes basically effective. Okay, that's how it works. Now, FAS, FAS AB applies to financial report, once again, issued by federal agencies and to the consolidated financial report of the United States government. Now, this topic is not really covered on the CPA exam and most governmental and not-for-profit accounting, most, they don't cover this topic altogether. I may create a chapter about this, but it's not really covered because it covers the federal government. Now, let's move. So we, we talked about the federal government. Let, let's move to the state and local. Accounting for financial reporting for state and local. Now we're done with this. With, with, we're done with the federal. Is set by GASB, the Governmental Accounting Standard Board. And here's GASB. So GASB is basically the equivalent of FA uh, FAS FAS AB. This is GASB. It governed state not-for-profit organization as well as government not-for-profit organization. Remember, we have not-for-profit organizations that are owned, in quote, by the government, that are controlled by the government. So GASB also set the accounting standard for those not-for-profit organizations like what? College and universities. For example, I teach at a public university called Westchester University. Basically, that's a public university. I also teach at the Community College of Philadelphia. I teach at Northampton Community College. Those are colleges and universities that are, that are under the government. Okay, healthcare entities. Well, you could see a hospital that's a government government run hospital, like a county hospital, museums, libraries, performing arts organization that are owned or controlled by the government. Now, the same thing. You could see college and universities that are privately owned. 
right? Healthcare entities, of course, hospitals that are run by a private company, museums, libraries, same thing. So notice those are run by the Fed, by local and state government. So FASB applies to those. FASB applies to those. So accounting and financial reporting standard for profit-seeking businesses and non-governmental and not-for-profit organization are controlled by FASB. So notice, we have the same thing as, you know, uh, uh, colleges and universities. For example, I teach also at the Sales University. That's a private Catholic university. It's a private. So they follow FASB. They don't follow GASB. Okay. Well, not 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 uh, not uh, the sales university. Let's assume, which I would never do that. Teach for Strayer University or the Vry, which I will never do that. Even if I was offered the job, then they are ruled under FASB because those are for-profit proprietary schools. But notice, not for-profit or those not for-profit organization follow FASB. And I hope, and I hope you know what FASB is. So FASB deals with businesses, for-profit organization, and non-governmental not-for-profit organization. Notice here, they are non-governmental. If they are governmental, they will go under GASB. So in the multiple choice questions, you have to look at the hospital. Is it the county hospital or, or is it a private, is it private hospital? It makes a difference. Now, both of these organizations, FASB and GASB, they, they're basically brother and sister, and the father is, <laughs> and the parents is the Financial Accounting Foundation. So, FASB and GASB are parallel bodies under the oversight of the Financial Accounting Foundation, FAF. FAF appoints the members of the two boards and provides financial support to the board by obtaining contribution from businesses. So who financed this whole process? Professional organization of accountant, financial analysts, CPA firms, debt rating agencies, state and local government. So people give money to this, organ to this organization, to the foundation. The foundation set up the boards for both of them. And that's why they are considered independent standard setting bodies. So not one party financed them. They are financed by different individual and they help set the accounting standard. Now, bear in mind that FASB, FASB, GASB, and FAS, FASAB, they're all part of GAP. Once again, we don't worry too much about the federal uh, government. I don't know why no one teaches the federal government, because unless you work for the federal government, no one's going to care about this. So they are all uh, they are all part of GAP, generally accepted accounting principle. Now, GASB are th authoritative sources or authority sources. You know, GASB are set in documents that are called Statement of Financial Accounting Standard or SFAS. SFAS. They used to have what's called interpretation provided that provided guidance for each statement, but they no longer issue interpretation. Now, what they issue instead are technical bulletin and implementation guides. Okay, from time to time they do that. So interpretation, that's gone. Okay, so the sources of authoritative, authoritative gap for state and local government are therefore under two categories. A is GASB statements and the old interpretation if they still exist. Category B is GASB implementation guides, GASB technical bulletin, literature of the American AI, the American Institute of the AIC of certified public accountant that are specifically cleared by GASB. So the first thing you do is you look at category A. Do you have an answer in GASB? If you do, you go with that answer. If not, you look at category B. If you don't have specified instruction either in, from either sources, category A or B, the government would look at transactions that are similar in nature to, to determine how should they book that transaction. How should they book that transaction? If not, if there's no similar transaction, the government would use non-authoritative sources for guidance, then that will be GASB concept statement, uh, FASB, GASB, or International State Board pronouncements, AICPA literature not cleared by GASB, other sources provided by professional organization, regulatory agencies, textbook, and published articles, or any practices that that's acceptable among governmental unit without any specific authoritative action, which is also kind of generally accepted. So this is the author. Th these are non authoritative sources and these are the authoritative sources. So this is basically all what you need to know about FASB, GASB and FASAB. At the end of this recording, I'm going to invite you again to check out my website, farhatlectures.com, whether you are an accounting student or especially a CPA candidate. I do help people. I do help students, CPA, succeed in their governmental accounting course. This is what I do. In my governmental accounting course, I'm going to say, you, usually you, you should not talk about yourself, is the best 
on the net. It's the best on the net. It's the best on the World Wide Web. Check it out. Take a look at it. I help many students. I can help you. Good luck. Study hard. And most importantly, stay safe.